Hi, welcome. I'm uh, James Genster-Bloom. I'm the Director of Athletic Communications here at Hillsdale College. I'm excited to be joined today by our head men's and women's track and field and cross country coach, R.P. White. Um, we're just here to do a little bit of a look ahead to the upcoming cross country season, some of the exciting things that are going to be going on um, this fall with our teams and kind of their, kind of their competition. So uh, R.P., I think a good place to start actually is last year, um, kind of giving a little short recap of where you guys are at coming into this season. Um, you know, last year's season, you were uh, a very young team. You know, on both sides, men and women, you didn't have a whole lot of experience. And it was kind of a growth and learning season. Can you talk a little bit about uh, um, your team and kind of what you saw from them over the course of the year as they, as they kind of learned and got, as they kind of learned and improved? Yeah, as younger teams on both sides, it is about being a sponge and learning how to train and treat your body the right way. So um, it was imperative that they got experience racing, training, and going through the whole gamut of what a collegiate long distance running season is. So yeah, last year, a lot of learning lessons, a lot of lessons to be taught, um, but imperative experience. So um, highlights on either side, uh, Alex Mitchell, Liz Wamsley, Richie Johnston, Savannah Fraley, uh, they were extraordinary at the conference championship meet and the regional championship meet. Um, you know, as far as team standings go, the girls did actually a little bit better than I expected at the conference championship, and maybe there's a little bit of shock and awe once we got to the regional championship, and the guys kind of vice versa. They fell a little bit short at the conference championships and had a really, really good showing at the regional championships. So a lot to build on from last year, and really highlighting the program uh, throughout the entire year was Liz Wamsley, uh, um, to win as many races as she did to be a conference champion, a regional champion, and All-American in cross country again. Uh, that was really impressive. Okay. I do want to highlight that regional champion a little, championship a little bit because you have had All-Americans throughout the program, you know, pretty regularly. A regional championship, despite the fact that it's kind of a level down, is m a lot rarer and much harder. You know, um, Emily Oren in 2015 was the last one. I don't know if there were many before that. So um, just a really special year and kind of a way to cap her career for someone who's been so good for you for so many years. Certainly. Yeah, Liz, you know, she went out with um, flying colors and for her to go and win a regional championship like that, it was, a, it was a special day. And I think it gave her a little bit of confidence going to the national championship and to stick her nose in that race and do what she did there as well. Kind of talking about this season now, you know, the flip side of having a very young team the year before is now you're bringing back a lot of experience. Five of your top seven from the conference meet on the girls' side, five of your top eight on the men's side. Um, and you mentioned, you know, you're, you're losing Liz Wamsley, who was a great runner, but you're bringing back Savannah Fraley. You're losing Alex Mitchell, but you're bringing back Richie Johnson. So you do have those kind of all-conference returners to kind of build around. Can you talk a little about those two and kind of what you've seen from them? Yeah, there's a lot of experience, and even when it came to indoor track and outdoor track, those kids end up getting a lot of championship experience, which is crucial for their development, getting into, uh, you know, back into the limelight in cross country. So, um, yeah, Richie, uh, Ross Kuhn, Savannah Fraley, uh, they're all gained, you know, a, trem a tremendous amount of experience throughout their entire career, and S Savannah's, that was her her first go around last year. So to have them kind of be the next in line to show leadership within the cross country teams, uh, that's exactly what we're gonna need this upcoming season. You kind of you know, you know as a coach that um, you can't take improvement for granted just because you've got people returning. What are some of the keys for this group to kind of build off what the, the strong finish they had last season and kind of live up to that potential? Yeah, it all boils down to okay, what are you able to do for while you're in your indoor track season, what are you able to do on the track for your outdoor track season? Kind of resetting, making sure that you take an appropriate amount of recovery, and then building some momentum in the summer. The summer training is crucial, and if, especially if you have a really solid indoor and outdoor season, uh, you're going to be a different cross-country athlete. You're going to be much more competitive uh, with the, the fall to come. Now you had so many kids last year, especially freshmen, who were really just getting their first taste of it. I know I mentioned Savannah, but are there any kind of people that you're looking at who might be breakthrough performers, kids who maybe weren't super high up last year who you think could really benefit from that year of experience? Yeah, Anna Sturton is one that pops into my mind. She's a really competitive racer, uh, learning how to train, again, this past year. 
uh, and treat her body the right way. Uh, she'll be exciting to watch unfold this, this fall. Uh, Caleb Youngstead on the men's side, he was another one more geared towards longer distances and cross country, 10,000 meter cross country. He was a freshman last year. Uh, he has an aptitude to train. He's a tough competitor. So having a full year under his belt, I know that's going to pay huge dividends in the fall to come. Um, and you know, obviously, there's always new. There's always newcomers. Um, you have a pretty exciting class. You have another pretty large group actually coming in on both the men's and women's side, mm -hmm. and some real talent. Um, can you talk a little bit about the group you were able to recruit and bring in this year for both the men and the women? Yeah, on the men's side, we actually have seven seven guys coming in. There's one transfer from Lansing Community College. He's going to be really exciting to watch. Um, he works his tail off. Uh, he ran a steeplechase provisional qualifying mark uh, at Lansing. For a, it's a Division II mark, but that's what he was able to do last year. Uh, and he's going to step in and take a leadership role right away. Uh, there's six other incoming freshmen on the men's side. And really, they showcased a lot of development and growth in their senior year. Um, I didn't know exactly what I was getting until their outdoor season their senior year. Uh, so I was really surprised and happy to see that and these guys are fired up. They're training really hard. They're competitors. Uh, so you never really know with freshmen, uh, especially once you climb to 10,000 meters, you're essentially doubling your race distance. So the sport is similar, but it's not the same. That's, that's what I always say. So um, yeah, exciting to, to see what those guys can do. And on the women's side, a smaller class, there's four coming in. Uh, but again, Allison Kuzma, She's from Zealand East. She had run 17.18 in the 5K on the track in high school, uh, sub 10.40 in the 3200. She's going to be really exciting to take a leadership role, as well as Evan Humphrey from Missouri. Uh, she then ended up running 4.54 in the 1600 at the tail end of her high school outdoor track career. So, uh, so much momentum going into summer training, and there's a lot of talent that's coming in. Um, you know, just to kind of look ahead to, to the season to come here in terms of the meets you guys are going to be competing in, this year is really exciting and a little bit different for you guys. Um, I think it's the first time since 2020 that you have actually had a home meet um, and to be running at Hayden Park and to kind of, to kind of be reimagining that course, you know, and you have, you know, a duel with Finley to start out, always fun, kind of a good way to start the season. You've got your home invitational and then the big one, the GMAC Championships. Uh, what does it mean for your program to kind of be able to host a GMAC championship in cross country? Yeah, it's always good to be on Hayden Park. It's such a great training tool. But now that we have home turf advantage, uh, we will know all the nooks and crannies of the course, all the nuance, where to push, where to let off the gas. So it's extremely helpful to have uh, to, to be at home on your home course. Uh, when you're hosting a conference championship and the kickoff championship season. So I know everybody's really fired up. I get a lot of texts from the kids, how excited they are to be able to race at home and finally utilize our training tool as essentially a racing tool as well. So, um, and just looking forward to all the support that the college will provide. And I know a lot of people will come out and uh, witness their first cross country races that they've ever, they ever viewed. So uh, it will be fun to be at home and exciting. Just to note, that is October 26th, I believe, so that's a one to circle on your calendar um, and try and get out here for that. That should be a really good time. Um, you know, as far as kind of some other meets, um, you know, the regional this year is in, is in Chicago area. I don't know if it's actually in Chicago, but uh, um, Lewis is hosting. The national championships is back out in California in Sacramento. Um, I think those are courses that you know you guys have seen in the past mm -hmm. for regional and national championships. Can you talk a little bit about those two locations and kind of some of the challenges and opportunities they pose? Yes. Um, strategically, last year we went to Lewis because this year was going to be the regional championship. So to take a look at that course again with our returners was crucial for us. So we know the lay of the land there. For the men, it's going to be a little bit different because it goes from 8,000, which we raced last fall, to 10,000 meters, but we know what to expect. Um, and then Sacramento. Uh, I was kind of flabbergasted the last time we were out there how much of a racetrack that is. Uh, it's perfect, ideal weather most of the time and it's flat as a pancake, hard packed surfaces on a golf course. So uh, we will know how to prep for that course as well. So excited, excited for both of them, but I think we're well versed and ready to, to mm -hmm. tackle both of those courses. RP, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. We're looking forward to that uh, cross country season coming up. I said a, a few key dates just to reemphasize. Uh, home meets September 6th, 
September 14th, and then that big conference race on October 26th uh, out at Hayden Park. All those should be really fun. Um, just some things to look forward to in the future. So again, thank you very much for making the time today. Thank you, James.